Hi ladies and buddy, welcome back to my channel. In case you couldn't tell from the obnoxious mounting of books, today I'm showing you my book collection, introducing you to my babies. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? I'm gonna be starting off with some classics. So I will begin with Jane Austen. We love Jane Austen in this house. So under the Jane Austen umbrella, I've got Persuasion, Sense and Sensibility, Mansfield Park, and of course, Emma. Now I love Jane Austen because her books pretty much have the same plot. Well, okay, maybe not the same plot, but they're eerily similar yet so different. I think it shows just how much command she has over her genre. Anyways, next we have Charles Dickens. Full disclosure, I loved him as a child. So I'm really just keeping these books for nostalgia purposes. Oh, what's that? You want me to, you want me to make a joke? You, you want that? I don't mean to set some great expectations for you, but Charles Dickens has a way with words. <laughs> I just think his writing is very profound and I like it a lot. First off, great expectations. Christmas Carol, Oliver Twist, and A Tale of Two Cities. Next we've got Jules Verne. I really admire Jules Verne's ability to ignite our imagination by use of words. That's what writing is, but... <laughs> he's good at it okay um especially with the topics that he chooses to tackle it tends to be quite outlandish and it's like how did that even come to your mind so i've got around the world in 80 days and 20,000 leagues under the sun oh man i'm sleepy next we have little woman i've made my qualms with this book very clear in my last book haul video i recently watched greta gerwig's um adaptation of this book and i really loved it it kind of made me see it in a new light not gonna lie so maybe I don't hate it as much now. I just personally feel like the end of this book was quite contrived and very rushed. Next up, oof, Treasure Island, another favorite. Let me read you something from this book just to show you how beautiful it is. It was one January morning, very early, a pinching frosty morning. The cove all gray, the hoar frost, the ripple lapping softly on the stones, the sun still low and only touching the hilltops and shining far to sea. You can just visualize the scene. I, it's amazing. Next I have Sons and Lovers. I started reading this as a child and I, I thought maybe this is not the book for me. Next we have Anne of Green Gables. I love this book. Just puts a smile to your face. It's really that book to go to if you just need to relax and unwind and you just want to forget all your worries. This is the book for you. I don't know how I donated the Tom Sawyer book and I still have Huckleberry Finn. Next we have Robinson Crusoe. Not gonna lie, I have a bone to pick with abridged books, abridged versions of books that aren't targeted towards children. You know, this wasn't abridged for children, it's just abridged. And I just feel like if the author didn't want it to be as long as it was, it wouldn't have been as long as it was. So why would you take it upon yourself to abridge it? You know but anyways yeah Oscar Law did a really good job with the picture of Dorian Gray you know those books that when you read it it just makes you think and you ponder on it for a really long time this was one of those books this book made me ponder on the meaning of life for weeks after I'd read it so good book <laughs> Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte the Bronte sisters I just realized how different these books are you know regarding the plot next up Frankenstein I still not read this book. Um, am I a little scared to read it? Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but I will. I will get to it. Okay. So now we've reached the section of this video that exposes my affinity towards Shakespeare. Full disclosure: as a child, my mom did buy a lot of Shakespeare books, so that's where my love grew. We've got Romeo and Juliet, Othello, Julius Caesar, The Tempest, Much Ado About Nothing, Macbeth. The Merchant of Venice. Oh, you thought we were done? The complete works of William Shakespeare. Yep. Listen, I read Hamlet as a child and I never went back. I'm sorry. Okay, so yes, that's it for the classics. If you came here for the classics, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. However, if you are concerned to see all the other books I have, welcome back. We move now to classics that weren't written a billion trillion years ago. We've got Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and I love this woman so much. I have watched all her TED talks and every single speech of hers I can find. She's so eloquent and well-spoken. I literally just want to read all her books. 
Next up, we have These Beauties by Chinua Chibe. We've got Antos of the Savannah, A Man of the People, No Longer at Ease. This is a completion of Shaw's Contemporary African Stories, which he helped to edit alongside C.L. Ines. Ines. Then we have this book, which I mentioned in my glow up video, The Joys of Motherhood by Bushia Machessa. I'm reading it right now and I think it's pretty good. Blame Not the Darkness by Joe Frazier. I actually need to reread this because I don't really remember what it's about. But I know I liked it. <laughs> Searching by Nawal El Sadawi. I probably butchered that, I'm so sorry. X24 Unclassified, another compilation of short stories. Low key, high key, wish I could have had a story of mine in there, but it's fine. I'm sorry I'm moving so fast. Right now, there's construction going on, so I'm trying to make the best out of the break that they're on right now. This is The Narrow Path by Francis Salome, and this book struck a chord with me when I first read it. Every now and then, parts of this book just flash across my brain, and I'm just like, I need to reread this. And finally, to top it all off, A History of Ghana by FK Twigs. I'm kidding, it's FK Wall. Okay, speed round. Marley and Me by John Grogan. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll feel all the feels. Size 14 is not fat either by Meg Cabot. I don't know how I feel about this book. It's a little bit weird. I feel like it's a chick flick, but wrapped in a murder mystery. And it's just a little bit odd for me, not really my taste, but I have it. <laughs> I should probably give it to someone who might like it. The Runaway Jury. I've talked at length about how much I love this book. It's really good. Highly recommend it. <laughs> I've now become obsessed with John Grisham. Any book by John Grisham, I'm willing to read it. The Diary of Ellen Rim Rimba. Rimba. <laughs> I'm just gonna call this My Life at Rose Red. A friend of mine gave it to me to read it and it's unlike any other book I've read before. It's certainly very gothic and I think it explores very prevalent and real societal issues today. That same friend of mine gave me this book to read, which is Oscar season, and I'm yet to read it, but it looks cool. The Pigment by Paul Sindel. This book was basically a fever dream of my childhood. I vaguely remember it, and I remember I really liked it, and I don't know why, as in I've reread it, and I don't know why I liked it so much as a child. Next, we have this collection of books by Countess de Seguir. This again was a childhood favorite and I kept it because look at the covers, <laughs> so beautiful. You know, as I look back on these books, I remember being so anxious reading them because, you know, Sophie, the main character, does a lot of stupid things and I'm just like, stop! But then when I think of it now, I find it to be very funny. Growth. Another collection that I had was A Child Called It by Dave Pauza and there's supposed to be a third book, I don't know where it is, <laughs> but this book was so heartbreaking. It made me cry as I was reading it because it's about a boy and his abusive mother. I'm just realizing how tragic a lot of the books I read as a child were. That's what shaped me, that's what made me who I am today. <laughs> More books from my childhood that were way too mature for me, I had no business reading. <laughs> We've got Daniel Steele's Crossings. Ah, uh, this book is really something else. We've got Three Day Road by Joseph Boyden and The Bear Boy by Cynthia Ozick. So next is the sequel to The Dune Book. My mom bought this without realizing that it was actually a sequel. So I can't wait to get The Dune Book and read that and then read this. Next we have these, which I, I don't really know how I feel about them. I, I never finished reading them and I actually should. But so far, I'm really just keeping them because I like the colors. <laughs> They're yellow. We have the To All The Boys series, which a friend of mine gave for me to read. She said I would enjoy them and I began to read them and I kind of lost interest. I'll probably get back to it. Wait, I forgot to talk about Birds Without Wings. This is yet another book that I really, really love. I need to reread this. I feel like a lot of the metaphors may have gone over my head when I first read them. <laughs> Finally, this book. <laughs> this is a book I'm struggling to get through. It's by John Green and David Levithan, and I was very excited to read this. <sighs> I'm making a reading vlog right now about this book because apparently I'm a booktuber now. But yeah, I was kind of, you know what? You'll see in the video if you watch it, but I'm reading it, it's all you need to know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.